Um, again, we're going to talk about the reason why I'm converting to a concierge practice after maybe around 30 years of practice, now I'm going fully concierge. It's not something I would have done if things had not changed in medicine. So in order to explain to you why um, I'm doing this, I think it's first important to see where we are with the state of healthcare. Um, healthcare has changed tremendously. It's become a, um, what I call businessification. Uh, it's all about corporate America and the end game is making money in healthcare. So there's a cartoon here and as you can see, the patient is saying, doc, can you see the problem? And the doctor is having to look into the insurance company's ear and saying, oh, I'm afraid so. So this started in the early 90s, late 80s when insurance companies started putting barriers in front of doctors and patients. It started off with the HMO era when um, doctors were having to write referrals. It was easy. You wanted to go see a specialist, the doctor would have to write a referral to the specialist and it was as simple as that. I still used to write your medication, a prescription, you would go to the pharmacy and get your prescription. If you needed an MRI, a CAT scan, it was easy as writing a prescription, you would go get those. But don't forget insurance companies are for profit. How do they make a profit? They make a profit by you giving your premiums every month and premiums go up every year by you having deductibles, some people more than others. I've heard deductibles up to $10,000. So you're paying a premium of $250, $500, and then you have a $10,000 out of pocket per year. So basically the insurance company doesn't pay for anything. Unless you end up in the hospital, something happens, then I could see. Um, so that's how they're making a profit. They're taking your money, and when it comes to me trying to do something for you, meaning that if you need a medication, I have to do a prior authorization. If the medicine I believe, let's say, is X medicine is better than Y medicine for you, so I write for X medicine, the insurance company will come and say, no, Dr. Saban, you can't do that. You have to call us, get our permission in order for you to do that. They do this to uh, discourage me for writing those. They want you all to be on generics and the generics they choose. I went to medical school. I went to pre-med. I went to residency. I, led, I read uh, articles. So I'm the one who's trying to decide what medicine you should be on but it's the insurance company that finally has that decision. And it's their decision what you end up on. Unless, you know, I'm exaggerating here, but unless I give my firstborn and take out trash for the insurance companies, you're not allowed to get what I think you need. So they do the prior authorizations. If you need a MRI, a CAT scan, some type of imaging study or any kind of procedure, we need to go get pre-certification. Again, getting the insurance's permission to doing this. These are the way the insurance companies make sure that they're limiting expense that the patient is incurring for the insurance companies. When I, I get letters from insurance companies saying, Dr. Savani, compared to the rest of your colleagues, you're sending too many patients to specialists. You're writing for too many brand names. Again, these are a little bit of, I want to say threats, where they try to say, if you keep this up, you're out of our insurance plan. So there again, interfering with your well-being and your health. It's all for them to make a profit so that they could be the best stock to buy on Wall Street. So you go to CVS Health, my patients, CVS Health just bought Aetna for $70 billion. So tomorrow, those patients who have Aetna insurance will most likely be forced to go get their care from a minute clinic um, who has a nurse over there, not even maybe a nurse practitioner who's going to decide on your well-being as opposed to your doctor of 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. So again, for me, it's the insurance companies, the idea that they're all about profit. How do they do that? By interfering the care I need to give to you. Meaning I'm a doctor, people call, make an appointment, you come in, my nurse takes your vital signs, that should be the end of the game. No, doctors have three, four, five employees to deal with insurance, pre-certification, prior authorizations. That's just not right. Um, 
instead of, you know, when I want to write a prescription right now, instead of thinking what is the best prescription for my patient, I think about what is the easiest thing that I could write this, my patient will get it, and I don't have to deal with the insurance company. I don't want to think that way. But that's how I have to think right now. That's how I am thinking right now, and that's why I'm making the change. Because I'm, again, thinking more about, okay, I can't deal with five hours of fighting with insurance companies. That's not right. That's, you know, I am your um, physician. I'm your advocate. I want to stay your advocate. Um, in order to do that, I have to change. Um, David Wishman, I'm going to say his name out loud so we all remember his name. So in 2017, his total compensation was $83 million. Pardon me? <laughs> $83 million. We're oh, talking about. It's a jump change. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. We're talking about healthcare costs. Healthcare costs. Don't write a brand name. Give him a generic. Do this, do that. Why? Not for saving healthcare, for giving Mr. Whatever $83 million, right? The next thing that drove me down this road is electronic medical records. <coughs> so, electronic medical records was supposed to be something that would help both doctors and patients in the sense that all your records would be shared between physicians, um, that you could walk around with a little, what are these things called? Flash drives, Flash drives with all your record. So when you go to another doctor, you hand it to the doctor, th that specialist has your record. I know when you did your blood work in Dr. So-and-so's office, so I'm not repeating it. That was what medical, um, electronic medical records was supposed to do. So. This is an article that I found in Fortune magazine. The U.S. government claimed that turning American medical charts into electronic records would make healthcare better, safer, and cheaper. More than 10 years and $36 billion later, it is a mess. It's a complete mess. Um, none of the, there's over 600, I believe, or 700 different companies that provide doctors with electronic medical records. If there was one or two companies, perfect. But no, this was, again, corporate America finding ways to make money. So all these companies came out saying, we offering records, we're doing this, we're doing that. So that is the next thing that happened. Doctors right now sit. When I spend um, five minutes with my patient who has Medicare, I spend another 20 minutes on the computer putting in and data, putting in data. Um, data, some of which is very necessary, some of which is completely unnecessary and time consuming. Um, and not to the benefit of the patient and their health and well being. Um, doctors in an emergency room, there was in the article again that the doctor had to do 4,000 clicks a day. One, two, three, for 200 clicks, 1,000 clicks, 4,000 clicks. When are, when are you seeing a patient if you're doing 4,000 clicks a day? They call us pajama doctors, meaning what? So our last patient, I think, is scheduled at 3, 3.30. We're sitting, I'm still fighting it, so I'm not fully electronic. I still have paper charts because that's the only way I know how to take care of patients. But my associate, who uh, um, does fully electronic medical records, he's sitting on the computer until 6, 7, 8 at night. He goes home and does electronic medical records. So we're called pajama doctors. Um, so yeah, do doctors are uh, having a significant burnout. So I don't know if I could make this big, but th these are all little clicks that we have to do. So you click this, pull this down, click here, click here. To change a medication, it takes 10 minutes to discontinue a medication, or just changing the dose of a pill in a medical record, you have to take five minutes. It takes five minutes to change that. So here's <coughs> things that we have to put in. Social connection, talks on the phone, gets together, attends religious services, active member of club or organization. We have to click these. We have to answer these questions in your medical record. Instead of me sitting down and listening to what you're telling me about your chest pain or your children, how old they are, where do they go to school, I want to develop a bond with my patients, right? 
Um, that's half of the healing. If you so in order for me to really go back to practicing the way I want to practice, I don't want to come into work frustrated, um, thinking about medical uh, EMRs, having to deal with insurance companies. What can I do? So I, because I can't not see. So some doctors say, okay, we won't see any more p patients with insurance. Patients have to pay. They could file through their own insurances. A lot of doctors in the area are going concierge in, in Virginia. Why are we doing this? The idea is to limit the number of patients we have. By limiting the number of patients we have, in my opinion, what I, my goal is to limit the number of patients I have so I could go back to practicing medicine the way I've been used to practice, the way you've been used to me practicing, meaning sitting down and talking to you, listening to you, not worrying about my waiting room has 20 patients, I have to finish this conversation quickly, not worrying about telling you when you come for your physical, oh, oh you can't complain about your toe because your insurance says either you're here for your physical or you're here about a problem visit. So I don't want to think that way. I want to think what's best for you um, and how I could help you and listen to you. Even if we're not talking about medical things, maybe we're talking about the weather, I want to be able to spend time with you. The only way I could do that these days is by sp limiting the number of patients I have. We will still be accepting insurances. So most doctors and concierge practices still accept insurances. We still build the insurance. But when we limit the number of patients, it allows us, me time, to fight the insurance company, meaning I have some extra time on my hand to call your insurance company and say, yes, this is the medicine she needs and this and that. Um, it will give me time to sit behind that electronic medical record and make sure that's complete. If you go to church, if you don't go to church, or what those things are that they want me to click. Um, but for me, I mean, that's uh, are the positive things, I guess. But for me, it's about going back to being able to sit with you, talk to you without having any limits, without having any kind of restrictions. Um, so if I feel that I think you should be on X medicine, I will write X medicine. And then when your insurance says, no, 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 you have to take out the trash, I have time to take out the trash and put you on X medicine. So I will, you know, go out there, be your advocate and fight for you if I have that time. And, and I have to limit it again to 350 patients in order to be able to give to the patient what they need. Um, again, this is, an, I think, an old one. Right, Wendy? Wendy? Whitney? Um, <laughs> so if you see here, there's some number of concierge um, doctors is uh, 6,500, but I think now it's up to 12,000. So it's very quickly increasing in, I don't want to say popularity because that sounds like, it's out of must, out of need that this is happening. So a lot of doctors in the area are turning concierge. So there's a thing here that there, with concierge practice, there's 56% less hospitalizations. And I think that's because the doctor is able to take care of the patient better. Meaning what? These days, if you go to a specialist, I'm sure it's very difficult for the doctor to find time to discuss your case with the specialist, to make sure that your medicines is exactly right, you're taking the right medicines. So there's better communication f about you and your health with the different doctors, with myself, making sure that everything's fine. When you have an issue, you quickly come into the office so I could take care of it. This, I believe, leads to less um, hospitalizations. So again, um, why I chose to convert, there's less interference from insurance companies, return to the way I want to practice medicine, um, and it's definitely much more focused on patients and preventive care. So I'm a very preventive care kind of doctor. Um, my whole program is called Preventus. Preventus um, is the root Latin word to prevent. So I believe in prevention as opposed to a reaction to a problem. So I go looking for disease far before disease is present. I like to do studies and tests, be it labs, imaging studies, looking for problems that might show up. <coughs> so the benefits to the um, patients. What is the benefit for the patient? Again, for me, the benefit 
is that I take care of you. And I hope that this stuff is important, but I think the end of the day, the most important thing for the patient also is that your doctor is actually your advocate, taking a very, very close and in-depth look at your health and making sure that you stay healthy. And if there is something you need that will take care of it for you, the office will definitely take care of it for you. But um, most concierge services are very, very similar. You have 24-7 direct communication, meaning that you have my personal cell phone number. You have Whitney's personal cell phone number, uh, meaning you could contact me anytime you like. Two o'clock in the morning, you might be out of town, you could contact me. I might be overseas and you could contact me. So yes, I've had patients who call me when I'm on vacation and it's perfectly okay that you contact me. If there's something that needs um, attention to, Dr. Akbari is here and he'll see you. Um, if there's something I could take care of from, even if I'm overseas, I'll take care of it. Uh, yes, so for my patients when I'm away, Dr. Akbari will be seeing them. Um, again, Whitney will be here, but yes, there's access 24 seven to your doctor, which is very important. It's important, sometimes we don't realize how important it is, um, but if God forbid you're ever in a situation, some people ha have been and they've realized how important it is for me to be able to pick up the phone in a desperate situation and call my doctor and my doctor is there answering the cell phone. You're not calling a machine, you're not calling an answering service. Um, I think one of the examples was someone who just joined our practice a little while ago. Um, he ran out of, he went to New York or someplace, he ran out of his medication, called his cardiologist off, it was a cardiac medication, didn't hear back for three days. And for three days he didn't have his pill. Uh, um, he called Whitney, he texted Whitney on his cell phone at around eight o'clock, and within 10 minutes, his prescription was called into the pr uh, pharmacy in New York. So having that is a big um, benefit, I think. Um, and it really comes, it rings uh, home when you are in that situation. So 24 seven direct communication, be it text, email, or phone. I had, so I've been practicing for a long time. I have over 3,500 patients. Patients will call, and because of everything that's happening, you're trying to say, okay, how can I keep up with the costs that I'm in, uh, enduring? So we double book patients. We have, we're, our our um, schedule is full of patients. So I have patients who will call the office. You know, my stomach hurts. I need to come see Dr. Savani. First availability is in three weeks. Well, doc, by then I'll either be dead or... <laughs> <laughs> so I don't, I don't like that at all. So how do I address that? Limiting your practice size. I will sit and spend time with you. There's no limit. It's not like half an hour appointments, 45 minute appointments. No, your appointment is as long as it needs to be, right? So if you need to talk to me for 45 minutes, you talk to me for 45 minutes. Um, obviously, if there's two concierge at the same time, uh, we'll figure that out, but that will rarely happen. So again, we have enough time to spend time together, talk about your health, talk about your concerns. So same day appointments. I think one of the most important thing is coordination of care, meaning the specialists. So the fact that I could reach out to your specialists and ask them, you need to go see a cardiologist. Oh, Dr. Spani, they said the soonest I could get in is three weeks from now. I'll call the cardiologist. I have a relationship with most of the specialists here. Um, I do have a reputation, so they know me, and I could get you in uh, within a very reasonable amount of time. Um, I think that's very important. Um, as far as that. And then the insurance facilitation is all about, yes, we'll go the extra mile to do whatever your insurance company says we need to do for you to get the um, proper care that you need. Um, is there anything else? So an office that works for you, not for an insurance company, yeah, I don't wanna work for insurance companies, and these days we do. Not for a corporation or a healthcare organization. Um, Hopefully that will allow very good, high quality care. Uh, my patients who are here um, know how I practice, know my personality. Um, I like to get to know my patients. I like to hear what they have to say, hear what their concerns are. Some patients when they come to see you, 
they might have some anxieties, they might have some concerns, and they might have different ways of telling you this. The doctor has to sit and listen, try to see what is that patient when they're saying, I'm dizzy, doctor, I'm, and, and sometimes I have a headache. Are they trying to say, doctor, I'm scared that I might have a brain, something in my brain, I want an MRI? I have to try to get that you know, from the words that patient is saying and then say, you know what we'll do? Why don't we get an MRI for you to make sure everything's okay? That's what I want to go back to doing. Um, and that will give us time to do all that. <laughs> so um, hopefully you understand why I'm doing what I'm doing for my, um, why I'm changing after all these years to a concierge practice. I really would not have done this if I didn't have to, but I have to do this to be the doctor I've always been and I want to stay being that type of doctor. So if I don't change my practice um, approach, I won't be able to practice the owner practice. And that is um, giving you the short changing you as a patient. Yeah. Unfortunately, and all of this, the worst part is none of it is the patient's fault. So suddenly after all these years, I'm turning around and telling a patient, you know what, now if you want to see me, you have to pay me a, a, a yearly fee. That's just unfair. But this is where, where the environment of healthcare is. Well, I think that if you spend money to go on a trip or to go eat at a good restaurant or to go buy a good car, I think that's one way to absolutely look at it. Um, the cost of my program is the same as a grande vente mocha chocolate from Starbucks. Again, I really, really appreciate everyone coming out. I know it's not easy with the Tyson's traffic. Um, a lot of you already are part of the program. Thank you. Already are part of the program and we're here for just to show support. I really appreciate that. Um, and uh, this is something, again, I, I want to do so I could take care of my patients and go back to really taking care of all of you.